Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Girdari Das and today I want to talk about a subject that brings lots of confusion to spiritualists, which is the difference between planning and hankering. So in yoga, we're always talking about the need to be in the here and now. Krishna says it over and over again. Basically, Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita that, look, if you're not in the here and now, you're not a yogi. I mean, it's like that. It's just like, it's just that you can't negotiate it. If your mind isn't in the here and now, then you're not acting like a yogi in that moment. You're acting like a karmi. So there's this word karmi, which is a materialist, a person who's focused and, and bound by karma. And they're doing actions today, hoping for results in the future. So they're karmis. And the whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to teach you not to be a karmi, to become a yogi. So yogi means your mind is in the here and now. But we wonder like, oh, so what does that mean? How am I going to plan? Am I, how, how am I supposed to live in the here and now? Am I just going to wander around like a, you know, like a child, like a crazy person maybe? Just like no clue what's happening and what's going to happen and no plans. No. <laughs> no. So what we're going to talk about today is planning in the here and now and how you can adjust those two things. So planning is very important. You should definitely plan. You should have multiple plans. You should very carefully plan out your life. And that means you think about it, you have paths you decide to take, and how you're going to take those paths, and you, and you, you, you cut them into smaller steps, and you know, like, okay, this plan is a good plan, and this is the first step, and this is the second step, and then if this doesn't work, I have plan B and plan C. You know, I have, like, I like having at least up to plan C, you know. So you have plan A, plan B, plan C, and for each one of them, you've, you've figured out the steps, you've gone like, okay, when this happens, then I'll need this, and this, you investigate that thing now, so you're ready for that when it comes. So all these things you can do, you can have all these plans. But, huge difference. As a yogi, you don't fall in the trap of what I call the fantasy paradigm in a 3T path. You don't fall in the trap of thinking that, oh, then I'll be happy when I get to this stage, when I complete my plan, then I will conquer, I'll win, I'll get it, I'll be happy. No. You don't get into that mentality. That is a materialistic, foolish mentality. Because there's actually no place you can go, there's no goal that's going to fulfill you in the material world. It's not, oh, when I get that job, you know, that's not going to do the trick. Oh, when I win that prize, that is not going to do the trick. I'm going to win, the, you know, gold in the Olympics. That's not going to fulfill you. Your, 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 your soul, your mind, your being will not be fulfilled by some prize, by some money in the bank, by purchasing something. It never does. So you don't fall into that trap. You have a plan, it's a good plan, but then you enjoy the action. You bring your mind back to the here and now. That's, that's what a yogi does. A yogi is in the here and now, focusing on the action. And then that action, as Krishna teaches us in Bhagavad Gita, if you really want to advance, karma yoga, you make that action an offering to God. So the action itself is all you're, you're interested in, just fulfilling your dharma, your purpose, that's the mode of goodness. And then when you offer that, when you have the mentality of, look, I'm just acting here for your satisfaction, O oh Lord, as Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita, then you're a yogi. And things are happening. Results come. You focus on the action, results come. And then, of course, no plan, you know, can take you know, reality for too long. So it has to be adjusted. So you, you, you work in your plan. It's a good plan today. You do that today. And then reality changes. It's like, okay, let's adjust this plan. You know, now we have a new plan A, B, and C. And then you just go on focused on the action. Another really important point. So the first point is 
you don't fall in the trap of hankering for a specific milestone or the end objective of your plan. You don't do that. You always live in the here and now. But the second really important point is that your plan has to be based on Dharma, on you. Your plan cannot be based on a superficial goal. Oh, my plan is to make a million dollars. That's not a plan. That's not a plan. That's not a goal. That doesn't make any sense. Your goal has to be you fulfilling your purpose. A million dollars isn't purpose. So it has to be your purpose. What is my purpose? Oh, my purpose is to be a doctor. Okay, so then I want to be able to open a clinic to help people. So then I'll need a million dollars to help build a clinic. Okay, that's different. So your purpose is to be a doctor and to be a doctor, to the, you know, you, you think that the best way for you to exercise your purpose is to have this situation where you have a clinic. Fine, and then like, oh, for that clinic, I'll need a million dollars. So how do I go get a million dollars to build a clinic? I'll get a bank loan, I'll do this, I'll do this other thing. That's different. So your goal might include getting a million dollars, but it is not the purpose. It is not the end goal to have that money. It's so you can live your Dharma, to fulfill your Dharma better in that situation. Do you understand? So you focus your plan on your Dharma. I want to be the best person I can be, fulfill my duties, my roles the best way possible. So what do I need for that situation? What support do I need to be able to do my best to fulfill my Dharmas? And then you base your goals, I mean your plans and your milestones on being able to fulfill your Dharma the best in balance in harmony, all your dharmas, so you want to make sure that your plan has, okay, my, my work, I, I call it occupational dharma, my vocational dharma, but also then I want to be able to take better care of myself, of my family, of my community, of the planet. So what's the best plan for me to maximize fulfilling my dharmas, and including, of course, your spiritual dharma? Do you understand? So you base your plan on dharma, and you bring it back to the here and now, and then you start executing, and of course things are going to change, reality comes this way, the results this, how, okay, then you new plan, and it's, you're flowing with it. The difference between having a plan as a karmi and having a plan as a yogi is that as a yogi, you're free. You don't feel the weight, the burden. You're free to change it. You're light on your feet, as it were. You're free to change that path, just like water flowing down. There's a boulder. It's just going to flow around, and it's not going to get stressed over it. So if you don't have a plan, your life is a mess. If you have a plan and you're attached to it, you're full of anxiety, it's like internally not it, a mess. Externally, things might be or more organized, but internally, you're full of anxiety and fear, and that's not working. But then you do the best of the two worlds. You have a plan, but you stay in the here and now so that you have an organized life on the outside and wonderful organized life on the inside as well. Let me know if that makes sense. And if you want to hear more about this topic, please leave your comments below and help us by giving a like and subscribing to the channel. That's always very important. But most important is sharing. If you think somebody else might enjoy this, please share this content. Have a rest of your day with lots of peace and lots of love.